good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> this morning, while Phil was sleeping, Mr. Scott of the Rexall Company called and told Alice that he was going to drop in and see Phil about a matter of importance. Phil has just come down, and Alice is relaying Mr. Scott's message to him. He didn't say what he wanted, Phil. He just said he'll tell you when he gets here. I wonder what Mr. Scott has on his mind. Could he be mad at me for something? No. What could I have done that he'd be mad about? Maybe he heard your show last week. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it ain't the first daffodil of spring. <laughs> Little petunia head. Bill, do you think Willie could be right? Is it possible that the Rexall people are unhappy with the way you're doing the show? Unhappy with me? Oh, Ruby, relax. <laughs> Everybody says I'm the hottest thing to hit the airwaves since Jessica Dragonette. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Willie. Maybe you don't like me on the air, but plenty of people think I'm great. And if you don't believe me, ask anybody, anybody at all. Like who? Like my two kids. <laughs> hey, girls, come in here a minute. If you want the truth, ask a child. They'll give it to you straight. What do you want, Daddy? Phyllis, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to give me an unbiased answer. Now, who do you think is the greatest performer on the radio? Mommy. <laughs> Let's try it again, and this time, put it on the box. Uh, now, who do you think is the greatest... The greatest... Dale, stop waving that $5 bill under her nose. <laughs> Phyllis takes after me. She has a strong mind, and money won't make her change it. Try me, Daddy. I take after Uncle Willie. I'll say anything for t five bucks. <laughs> make it five, because ten you ain't gonna get. <laughs> Not only that, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to bribe you. I'm not trying to bribe you. You can keep the $5 no matter what you say. All I want to know is, who is the greatest performer on the rate? Oh, I better rephrase that. Why oh, take chances? <clears throat> now, who is the funniest man on the Rexall radio show? Uncle Frankie. Give me back that five, you fanatical. <laughs> My own children. I'd have done better asking Ozzy and Harriet's kids. Phil, I don't think this has anything to do with your ability. Perhaps Mr. Scott is a little annoyed with your brashness. You haven't been as respectful as you should be to your boss. Well, maybe I have been too irrepressible. Maybe I... Uh-oh, that must be Mr. Scott. Well, if it's respect he wants, I'll pour it on. Oh, good morning, sir. I am your humble servant. Your wish is my command. Don't make me a mint julep, Jeeves. <laughs> oh, it's you, Frankie. Come on in. Mm -hmm. I thought you were Mr. Scott, the sponsor. You're going to be nasty. I'll go out again. <laughs> <laughs> What's the 
What's the sponsor coming over here for? I don't know. It's got me worried, too. You know, that Scott could be coming over here to fire me. If you don't know, why look at the black side of things? Maybe his coming over here has nothing to do with your job. Maybe it's a simple thing that has nothing to do with the show. Like what? Maybe he's in love with Alice and wants you to give her a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> Frankie, I'm in no mood for this this time of morning. Let's be serious. Don't you realize that my well, job... Well, that's Mr. Scott. Why don't you bring it? A... Oh, hello, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> hello, Alice. Curly seems to be worried about his job, and I was cheering him up. Oh, Phil, you're being very silly. You're building things up in your own mind without knowing what it's about. Has it ever occurred to you that Mr. Scott might be happy with you on the show? Oh, Alice, you and your wild ideas. <laughs> well, it's not wild at all. Phil's doing a good job on the show. He's selling lots of Rexall products, and he's helped their business. I think maybe Mr. Scott is coming over to give him a slight increase in salary. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I've helped his business, and in appreciation, he's given me a slight increase in... A slight increase? Why, that in great. <laughs> I've driven his business... Triple his business, and all he wants to give me is a slight increase. Why, I never... Well, I'm not going to let him get away with that. Wait till I see him, a slight in. That's him now. I can't wait to tell him off. Good morning, Mr. Harris. You cheapskate! <laughs> After all I've done for you, you have the nerve to offer me a measly $2 raise. Perhaps I'd better come back when he's sober. <laughs> Uh, see you later, Harris. Oh, don't go, Mr. Scott. Please come in. Oh, very well, Mrs. Harris. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Scott. I was a little bit excited. But I... Well, I can't wait to find out why you came to see me. Now, tell me, Mr. Scott, are... Uh, are you here to give me a raise? Oh, come now, Clyde. <laughs> well, Mr. Scott, uh, you're not here to fire me, are you? No. No, but when I get back to the office, I'll drop it in the suggestion box. <laughs> no, Harris, no, I am not here to fire you. Well, then why did you come over? Wait a minute, if you think I'll give Alice a divorce, you're crazy. <laughs> Phil, what are you talking about? Uh, Harris, before this gets completely out of hand, I'd better tell you exactly why I'm here. Well, I certainly wish you would. Well, I want to ask hey, you Charlie, if you would be... what kind of a host are you? You leave me standing inside you. Oh, it's the prime rib himself. <laughs> well, if it isn't Rimley, the no-talent kid. <laughs> That's a pretty nasty remark. So you've come over to fire my pal Curly, huh? Scotty, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I don't like you. I don't like you. I just said that. Don't be a copycat. <laughs> Frankie, will you please stop? The man didn't come Curly, here. Curly, listen. I didn't mind when he fired me, but when he fires my best friend, he's got me to answer to. Remley, Remley, he ain't firing me. Scotty, pay no attention to Frankie. You see, the poor kid uh, doesn't know what he's saying. You see, his uh, mind. You mean he's... <laughs> Like a bag of cashews. <laughs> He's a psychiatric case. Caused by the fact that he hates his father. He hates his father? I should think it would be the other way around. Oh, I can't stand the suspense any longer. Mr. Scott, what did you come over to see Phil about? Well, it's like this... I well, want Mr. Scott, sir. I'm glad to see you, sir. You're looking exceedingly well, sir. Willie, stop crawling toward him. <laughs> William, what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be at your desk at the Rexall office? Well, uh, I just dropped in to see my sister, sir. On our time? Naughty, naughty. <laughs> well, I was just leaving, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Scott. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Willie. Ah, uh, good man, that William. He thinks of nothing but the company's interest. It's heartwarming. I think it's sickening. <laughs> the way he fawns over you and Rexall. Remley, you work for Rexall, too, you know. It wouldn't hurt for you to have a little pride in our fine company of 10,000 independent druggists, those men who sell our 2,000 drug products, 
and strive All to right, maintain... All right, don't drag it out. <laughs> I got pride in the company. Have you ever bought one of our drug products? No. Well, the least you can do is buy one of our drugs. What for? I'm not sick. What do you want me to do? Go out of my way to get a malady just so I can use your drug? Remley, I'm not asking you to go out of your way to get a malady. But if you have a chance at one, don't turn it down. <laughs> Mr. Scott, never mind, Frankie. Look, Mr. Scott, why did you come to see me? Well, it's about my daughter. Her school is giving a dance, and she's on the entertainment committee, and she insists that your band play for the dance. Is that all? Oh, gee. Oh, gee, that'll be an honor. Of all the bands to choose from, she picks mine. Tell me, why does she like my band so much? She's tone deaf. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mrs. Harris, would you consent to come along and sing a few numbers for the kids? Oh, it'll be a pleasure. Oh, thank you. The entertainment committee is meeting at the school gym in about an hour. I wonder if you two would mind coming over to discuss the program with them. Oh, sure, we'll be over. I'll be there too, Scotty. Oh, <laughs> goody. <laughs> Don't put yourself out, Remley. Ah, it's no trouble at all. I'll bring my guitar. Well, we could use your guitar. You want me to play, huh? No. No, but after the dance, they're having a weenie roast, and they'll need some wood to start the fire. <laughs> I'll see you folks at the gym. Goodbye. Goodbye. I think I've been insulted. <laughs> Phil, what do you think I ought to sing at the dance? What do you think the kids will like? They'll like anything you do, honey. Hey, how about the tune you were rehearsing today? You know, the one that goes... Da, ba, ba, da, da. Da, 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 you da. better let me do it, Pappy. Yeah, you can't stand it. Johnny, get your girl. Tap her on the shoulder. Tap her on the shoulder. Say you'd like to hold her. Johnny, get your girl. Walk her in the moonlight. Got no moonlight. Talk about a June night. Don't wait for introductions. Don't be so formal. Just step right up and do the thing that's normal. Johnny, get your girl. Tap her on the shoulder. Get a little bolder. Give romance a whirl Don't let another Johnny get your girl Johnny, get your girl Tap her on the shoulder Tap her on the shoulder? Gee, now I feel a little bolder mm, Say you'd like to hold her You gotta walk her in the moonlight. Well, if the moon is out of view, what's a fella gonna do? Well, then you just talk about a June night. Don't wait for introductions. Don't be so formal. Just step right up and do the thing that's normal. Johnny, 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 get your girl. Mr. Harris, it's nice of you and Mrs. Harris to come over to the gym. Remley couldn't make it, eh? <laughs> oh, no, he'll be here soon. He went home to get his guitar. Oh. <laughs> Which one of these two lovely girls is your daughter, Mr. Scott? Oh, they're both mine. 
This is little Laurie. She's just eight years old. She sort of tags along after her sister. Oh, hello, Laurie. How are you, honey? Oh, I feel fine, thank you. And I always feel fine because I use Rexall drugs to keep me healthy. Uh, not, not, not. <laughs> Introduce me. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Marjorie, I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Harris. Hello, Marjorie. How do you do, Mrs. Harris? Hi, Margie. Hello, Curly. <laughs> I hope you don't mind my calling you Curly, but all the kids do, and oh, so I Oh, no, oh, no. Gee, that's all right. Hey, Margie, your dad tells me that that you insisted on having my band play at your dance. Uh, why did you pick me? Who else is there? <laughs> oh, Marge. Oh, I bet you look keen up there in the bandstand. I can just picture you in a tuxedo. You must look terrific. Oh, oh no, I don't. <laughs> I bet you do. No, no, really, I don't. But you must. Marjorie. Have you ever seen Curly in a tuxedo? No, I haven't. Well, I have, and the boy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Alice, I don't think it's very nice of you to contradict Miss Scott. Uh, uh, Mr. Harris, please pay no attention to Marjorie. She's only 16, and anything looks good to her. <laughs> Now, uh, why don't you and Mrs. Harris come along and meet some of the other girls? Oh, Daddy, why don't you and Mrs. Harris go alone? I want to discuss the, um, uh, dance with Mr. Harris. You go with Daddy, Laurie. Well, okay. But, Margie... What? I don't think Curly's as good-looking as you said he was. <laughs> we'll see you later. Hmm. <laughs> Poor little kid. Only eight years old, and already she's so nearsighted. <laughs> well, Margie, what kind of music would you like at the dance? Now, we can give you a Dixieland, four beat, or uh, how about a little bebop with a Lombardo float? <laughs> it's not the dance I want to discuss. Curly, may I be brutally frank? Oh, yeah. Sure. What's on your mind? Well, I hope you won't misunderstand me, but, well, we moderns believe that curbing one's emotions can result in a serious frustration that tends to impair one's psychological development. Don't you agree? Yes, allegorically speaking. <laughs> but perusing it superficially, I find retrochorical. <laughs> I love algebra, don't you? <laughs> Curly, I'll get right to the point. You might not believe me when I say this, but I think you're charming and handsome and the most wonderful man in the world. Yeah, but what were you going to tell me that I might not believe? <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm in love with you. <laughs> You're in what with who? I'm in love with you. You don't hate me for feeling that way, do you? No. It's a perfectly normal feminine reaction. <laughs> but... But Margie... Let's face it, this is madness. <laughs> oh, you're laughing at me. No, honey, I'm not honest, I'm not. But you're a little too late, kid. I've already been spoken for. <laughs> oh, look, Margie, you just got a schoolgirl crush. You'll get over it. I ain't saying you'll ever be the same again. <laughs> Oh, 
worry, honey. You'll survive. Don't you like me just, just a little bit? Sure, I like you. I think you're a swell kid, but... But, well, I'm a happily married man. Are you happy? <laughs> Are you really happy being married to an older woman? <laughs> Uh, she's not that much older than I am. <laughs> now, look, if you'll excuse me, Margie, I think... I th well, I think I hear Alice calling me. I'll see you around, Margie. Au revoir, Cherie. Oh, he's so irresistible. Marjorie, don't you think it's about time you got started? Why, Marjorie, you look sick. What's the matter? Daddy, I'm in love. Oh, that again. <laughs> well, who's the lucky boy this time? Bill Harris. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no! No, no, no! I can't. No, no, no! Oh, no! Daddy, no. I... <laughs> Daddy, get up off the floor. You're causing a scene. I won't stand for it. I'll... I'll... Harris! Harris! Marjorie, you run along. I'll take care of this. What's up, oh. Scotty? What's all the excitement about? As if you didn't know, you old roué. My daughter just told me she's in love with you. Well, it ain't my fault. Besides, what you got to get excited about? She's just a schoolgirl with a crutch. She'll forget about me tomorrow. I refuse to be tortured that long. <laughs> Make her fall out of you, love with you by the time you leave here today. <laughs> I'll have you barred from radio for life. I'll give you a half an hour to do it. But Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott. <laughs> Certainly got the mumbles, ain't he? <laughs> oh, why couldn't I have been born homely? <laughs> over here. What's Mr. Scott so mad about? Oh, Alice, you'll never know. I'm in trouble. And I know you'll be sympathetic. Honey, Mr. Scott's daughter is in love with me. Oh, that poor girl. <laughs> never mind the poor girl. Just think of me. Scott's threatened to bar me from radio unless I can make her forget me before we leave here. Now, look, Alice, you've got to talk to her. Try to convince her that I'm not as wonderful as I am. <laughs> but, honey, do it in a nice way. Oh, oh, She's Phil, a... Phil, she, she's headed this way. You duck behind this post and let me handle her. Go right ahead. Behind you. Yeah, go ahead. Go on now. I'll fix everything, but good. Oh, Mrs. Harris, didn't I just see Mr. Harris here? Where'd he go? Oh, he'll be right back, Marjorie. He just stepped out to adjust his girdle. <laughs> Middle-aged spread. <laughs> All men get a little paunchy when they reach the halfway mark. Halfway mark? My mother used to take me to see her pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Harris, what do you mean halfway mark? Mr. Harris can't be a day over 30. He doesn't have a wrinkle on his face. Plastic surgery does wonders. <laughs> you mean he's had his face lifted? Only four times. <laughs> All I did was go in and get a nestimate once. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Harris, did he really have his face lifted that much? Oh, yes. In fact, he overdid it. Last time he had to go back and have it lowered. <laughs> You know, his nose was lifted so high, every time he sneezed, he blew his hat off. <laughs> oh, now she's reaching. <laughs> I don't believe you, Mrs. Harris. If he were as old as you say, he couldn't sing the way he does. His voice has such a wonderful quiver. Upper plate wobble. <laughs> Upper plate, I got one lousy little bridge. <laughs> Mrs. Harris, I'm sorry, but I don't believe a word you say. You're very fortunate to be married to such a wonderful man. And if he were mine, I couldn't talk about him the way you do. Goodbye. That's telling her, Margie. 
<laughs> well, Phil, you can come out now. I'm sorry it didn't work, but I tried. Oh, yeah, you tried, you tried. To hear you talk, you'd think you were married to an old Essex. <laughs> It didn't do any good either. Oh, Alice, how am I going to discourage her? I can't... Hey, wait a minute. Remley. He's the guy that can get me out of this. Hi, Remley. Hi, Curly. Sorry I'm late, but I had oh, to... Oh, Frankie, you're just the guy I'm looking for. Uh-oh, there's dirty work afoot. <laughs> wait a minute, Remley. you got to do me a big favor. Mr. Scott's daughter has fallen madly in love with me, and Remley, you got to take her off my hands. Oh, no, wait a minute, Curly. I ain't going Now, gonna... Remley, if you don't do this for me, I'm going to lose my job. Look, she's over there with those other girls. Just go over and ask for Miss Scott... Make up to her, Remley. All right, I'll do it for you, but I don't like it one bit. What do you want me to tell her? Tell her anything. Tell her you're in love with her, can't live without her, and you want to marry her. You know, routine number three. Lay it on. <laughs> oh, all right, okay. <laughs> Things I do for that guy. Oh, well, she probably won't be interested. If she goes for Curly, she won't like the Tyrone power type like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tell her that... You... Hello, mister. Somebody talking to me? Oh, you're down there. Hey, kid, maybe you can help me. Where can I find Mr. Scott's daughter? I'm his daughter. I'm Lori Scott. You're... <laughs> Ooh, I gotta have a talk with Curly. <laughs> Look, kid, are you sure you're Mr. Scott's daughter? Yes. I don't get it, but Curly asked me to do it, so here goes. <laughs> Lori, I'm madly in love with you, and I want to marry you. What do you say? Okay. <laughs> Resist me a little, will you? Don't you know you're supposed to play hard to get? Why? I always wanted to get married, and you're the first one to ask me. <laughs> oh, let's have a church wedding. Look, Lori, let's not rush into this. I may not be the one for you. Shop around a little. <laughs> Looking, but you're cute. Thanks a lot. What's your name? Frankie Remley. Why? Oh, so I can tell Daddy when I ask him if it's all right to marry No, him. wait a minute, kid. Come back here. Don't tell your father. Hey, kid. Oh, kid. Marjorie, you've made me the happiest man in the world. You're sure you're no longer in love with Mr. Harris? Definitely not, Daddy. Mrs. Harris made me realize that he's pretty old. Why, by the time I'm 30, he'll be almost 90. <laughs> well, I'm glad you saw the light. Now I can face the world again. What a relief. Daddy, can I talk to you? Oh, yes, Laurie, what is it, dear? Daddy, I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a little too young to... Wait a minute. <laughs> Laurie, please. Please tell me it's not Bill Harris. No, it's not him, Daddy. Oh, thank goodness. Who are you in love with, dear? What's the little boy's name? Frankie Remley. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Daddy, come back here. Don't throw yourself through the window. Right now, our Rexall family druggist is waiting on a customer. Okay, there you are. Uh, anything else now? I better put in a tube of that salve my husband uses. He squeezed the one he has now with everything short of a steamroller. Well, he can't possibly be as rough on it as Rexall scientists are. Why? How's that? Well, a tube that contains a drug product has to be made of extra strong yet flexible material. It's got to be able to take bending and rolling and squeezing without cracking open. But even the right material from that standpoint will sometimes cause a chemical change in the product. When that happens... Rexall men of science must find a suitable liner. A what? A liner, a thin coating inside the tube that keeps the product from touching it. Then to make sure that all three will stand up under all usual conditions... This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> 